Good afternoon. Welcome to worship on this summer afternoon. It's nice to be indoors um, on a day like today, but we're not complaining because um, we're grateful for summer and we're grateful for being outdoors when we can. And we're grateful for the sunlight that gives so much to the plants and life that we share with in, on this planet. So we're, we're thankful. Want to welcome you wor warmly to worship today as we celebrate the second Sunday after Pentecost on this Pentecost 2 weekend we are back in the gospel according to St. Luke, and we are in the eighth chapter of Luke. And uh, you'll hear from that gospel pericope what's happening in the life of Jesus. We like to say here at Messiah, if you're worshiping with us and you, in person or online, and you don't have a home congregation, we'd like for you to make Messiah your home. Let me know. Let a shepherd know, call the church office, and we will gladly welcome you into the family of God here. A couple of announcements as we go to worship today. You are invited to an event in memory of John Gertis on Sunday, July the 3rd, that's 4th of July weekend, at 3 p.m. at Springfield Botanical Gardens. Uh, this is a special event that honors the life of John, the late John Gertis, and Carolyn and the kids are more than happy for you to join them at this event. It's, I think it's going to be the unveiling of a sculpture in his honor. So plan on attending. I plan to be there, and I hope you can join us as well. And then we continue with our efforts to help Ukrainians who are arriving in our area. You notice on the pews that there are mustard-colored envelopes that say Ukraine Refugee Fund. Uh, use that envelope to be generous with your gifts towards this much-needed cause. In our prayers today, we are praying for Ukrainians who are suffering, who feel trapped, who are injured, who are grieving their loss and defending their freedom and nationhood. Notice the war is drawing, drawing on, and so the needs become greater. We also pray for victims of mass shootings and their families who are grieving their loss. We're praying for Eleanor Spragling, Spragling newborn relative of Karen Bowman, who is having breathing issues. We're praying for Bob White, who is preparing for a follow-up surgery, and for... Dolly Darson, who is preparing for surgery. That's Samantha's mom. All who are, we are praying also for all who are privately dealing with health crises. And today we remember also in our prayers Mildred Z Zab Zaraban, who is the grandmother of Don Gutierrez. We've been praying for her a couple of weeks now. We pray now for her soul to rest in peace as she passed, and for God's strength and comfort for Dawn and the rest of their family. These are all the announcements that I have for you. Stand with me as you're able as we go to worship. With the words of the psalmist, I will declare your name to my people. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. In celebration of our baptism in Christ, we worship God in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pray with me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may love you completely and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The hymn, all are welcome.
Lord be with you. And also with you. O Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah 65. It was, I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices a people who provoked me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat sw swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountain and reviled me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servant's sake and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants will, shall settle there. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we, no longer, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have closed yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in the house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept on the guard and bound with chains and shackles. But he would break the bounds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. 
Jesus then asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there on the hillside, a large herd of swine was feeding. And the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herders saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone out, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerizans asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Sanctify us in your truth, O Lord, for your word is truth. Amen. Author Leo Buscalia tells a story about the night his father came home and said it looked as if he would have to go into bankruptcy because his partner had absconded with the firm's funds. That night, that very night, his mother went out and sold some jewelry to buy food for a sumptuous feast and she was scolded for doing so by other members of the family. We hear in a new way the gospel pericope on this Juneteenth and Father's Day weekend. Everything about this man left a bad impression. He was possessed by demons, he lived in tombs, he walked about naked, he had to be guarded, sometimes he was confined with chains, but he would break free and run off, run off like a wild animal. So much so that I wondered, upon reading this gospel pericope, if anyone felt sorry for him. His parents probably did, but we're not told. They must have suffered embarrassment and felt powerless to help him. I imagine that some people were cruel to him, and not only cruel to him, but critical of his parents for not doing more to keep their community safe. So this is a broken community, not unlike ours. Like the demoniac, we have a serious problem with mass shootings. 
but a bigger problem preventing it from happening again and again and again. The Band-Aid efforts to restrain Legion with chains did not work, and so too, talk without action in a culture of gun violence achieves nothing. Powerlessness to improve the quality of life in community leads to anger, frustration, and apathy. It is hard to believe that the first, the very first person Jesus met at Gadara, and I'm using Matthew's location because Matthew's location seems more plausible. It was just six miles from Galilee over against the Gezerins, which is 33 miles from Galilee. And they said they just went across the lake, right, on the other side. It is hard to believe that the first person Jesus met when he got out of the boat was this demon-possessed man. He saw how troubled the man was and called out his oppressors. Jesus was not scared, but the people were scared. So I ask you, who are you scared of? Who do you wish to avoid and why? How do they scare you? People avoided the man called a demoniac because he was out of control. Demons are created spiritual beings who rebelled against God, often referred to as unclean spirits. They afflict and deceive people to rebel against God. As evident in the gospel pericope, they're not friendly. The constant torment prevented the man from living a normal life in community. He could not work, did a poor job of caring for himself, and he was violent. Therefore, people avoided him. It is common practice in our culture to like people who like us. We associate with people similar, of similar interests, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and so on. We assume that if they are not like us, then they will not like us. That the other is dissimilar threatens homogeneity of community. As such, we resist new knowledge and experiences that would translate into self-expansion opportunities. By freeing the demon-possessed the demon possessed man, what Jesus does is that he restores community. Freed from powers that divide and destroy, the people, including the demonic, demoniac, become a healing community. Gadara becomes a place for people to flourish spiritually, vocationally, socially, and economically. Returning to the story with which I began, 
Mascalia's mother told her family that night, the time for joy is now. When we need it most, not next week. By courageous action, she freed her family from fear and doubt. She rallied them to see the challenge as an opportunity. We can have the same approach to challenges we face. Like Jesus, who was not scared of the demoniac, we are not alone when confronting demons in this world. God's Spirit, who claimed us in baptism, is always with us. Therefore, we are free to live as children of God. From sitting at Jesus' feet today, we re-enter the world beyond these walls, freed from powers that threaten to divide and destroy us. We cast out demons, such demons as hatred and violence and racism and greed and idolatry. We restore community in, with, and through Jesus' love, not for ourselves, but for the good of all people, and especially for those who are different from us. Amen.
words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God and the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As God's forgiven people, we share the peace with each other. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Share the peace with each other. Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. Holy God, you hear the cries of those who seek you. Equip your church with evangelists who reveal the continuous call of your outstretched hands and your promises of a home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of the earth and our need to restore places where land, air, and waterways have been harmed. Guide us to develop and implement sources of energy and food production that do not destroy the earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who are marginalized or cast out. On this Juneteenth observance, guide us continually toward the end of oppression in all its forms, especially the violence of hatred, and bring true freedom and human flourishing to all your beloved children. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who suffer. Come to the aid of all who are homeless, naked, hungry, and sick, especially Nathan, Eleanor, Dolly, Elliot, those receiving treatment for cancer, Randy, Bob, Bev, Ruth, Beth, Georgetta, Eddie, Duke, Charlie, Reese, Dan, Hope, and Joanne. Bring peace to any experiencing mental illness and those who suffer privately, that they can clearly recognize your loving presence. God of grace. Hear our prayer. You hear the cries of those who celebrate and those who grieve on this Father's Day. Nurture mutual love and tender care in all relationships and comfort those for whom this day brings sadness or longing. God of grace, hear our prayer. We give thanks for the faithful departed whose lives proclaimed all you had done for them, especially Mildred. At the last, Unite us with them as we make our home in you. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name, and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
we come now to the table of our Lord, where all is made ready that we might feast on this bread of heaven and this cup of blessing as Jesus comes to us in this meal. We're reminded that here Jesus meets us again in the word proclaimed and now at this table. He feeds us with himself in this ordinary bread and in this cup that we might be nourished and strengthened in our faith and that with this food of life we might serve him. Today, as we come to the table, we are mindful that his gift to us prompts us to bring our own gifts. And so we place gifts in the plate on entry or exit. And we also acknowledge gifts that we bring for we realize that what we put in the plate is a token of the greater gift of our lives to God. Today we acknowledge the gift of Kathy Carlton as our assisting minister. We acknowledge the gift of Jolene Sesney as our lector, the gift of Lucy Stillwell as our cantor, the gift of Marilyn Boston as our organist, the gift of Elaine Novak and Morgan Benedict and Kelly as our, and Drew Bowman as our AV tech. And we acknowledge the gift of our shepherds in JP and Jolene Sesney and Mary Keidel. The altar gill has prepared the table for which we are grateful, transforming this place from the celebrative colors of Holy Trinity to the color of Pentecost, life in the spirit, green. And they have been ably assisted by the floral committee that has prepared beautiful floral arrangements with symbols from the reading for us today. In addition, joy waters baked bread, the bread that we will break and share in today. For these are all gifts in response to the greater gift of Christ who comes to us in this meal. And so we prepare ourselves with the words of the prayer of preparation. Merciful God, we do not presume to come to your table trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat and drink the body and blood of our dear Son, Jesus Christ, that we may live in him and he in us, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood that is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do it for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In Christ's presence there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet.
stand with me as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you unto life eternal. Amen. Living God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and forevermore. Amen. Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Love your neighbor.